The European Union says it is set to renew sanctions in December on senior officials in the Democratic Republic of Congo, including presidential candidate Emmanuel Ramazani Shadri. The EU imposed sanctions last year on Mr. Shadri, who served as Interior Minister, and 15 others after a crackdown on protesters who opposed a delay in holding elections. The delay left President Joseph Kabila stay, let President Joseph Kabila stay in office two years past his legal mandate, although an election is now set for December 23rd. Congo's government says the sanctions, which include travel bans and asset freezes, are illegal, and renewing them is pointless because President Kabila plans to step down after the election. German Chancellor Angela Merkel is urging international companies to invest more in Africa, saying the continent has huge growth potential. Speaking in Berlin at the opening of an investment summit attended by several African heads of state, Mrs. Merkel spoke of the need for fair trade relations with Africa. Her comment comes, Germ comes as Germany seeks to reduce the flow of migrants from Africa. Mrs. Merkel's controversial 2015 open-door policy that led to more than one million migrants entering the country is a major reason why her popularity in Germany fell. Ahead of the summit, Germany's development minister, Gerd Müller, said Germany would invest in healthcare, agriculture and education in Africa. He described hunger as murder. The UN Children's Fund says tens of thousands of children who have returned from Angola to the Democratic Republic of Congo need help urgently. UNICEF spokesperson told journalists in Geneva that among the returnees, more than 80,000 are children. In addition to suffering from hunger and bad weather, those expelled from Angola have also faced extortion at checkpoints along the country's border with DRC. UNICEF estimates that among the, the, the returnees, more than 80,000 80, are children. And these children are in need of immediate humanitarian assistance. Most of these children come from Angola. They, many of them were part of the mining business. And they don't speak French. They speak little Lingala. They speak uh, Portuguese. And it's uh, obviously even more difficult for them to go to school. I mean, it's, it's currently impossible for children just to integrate the, the schools in Kasai uh, due to this additional language barrier. Many children say that they had to leave Angola with, their, with some of their goods, but very quickly, and some of them are, are shocked. Malawi and the United Nations Children Agency are testing the use of drone technology to help farmers boost crop production. The landlocked country, which suffers periodic crop failures and is prone to floods, is often in need of food and other aid. Malawi's government and various United Nations agencies are using the country's drone testing corridor to test drone assessments of crop help in the region. The United Nations Children Agency and other agencies are currently using the drones to capture aerial imagery of crops. The information will then be analysed to identify types of crops, the yield and health, as well as whether crops have been damaged by drought or pests. The data is checked against the ground of survey and shared with farmers. UNICEF will use the information to anticipate the nutrition needs of children. Launched last year, the test corridor centred at the Kasunga Aerodrome is meant to test effectiveness of drones in humanitarian emergencies and other development uses. What we are trying to do here is actually making data available real-time also to the farmer so they can know whether or not they should be uh, stopping doing some of the practices intervene with, uh, I don't know, a pesticide or the natural biological systems, see if they have to start um, preparing for the dry season and therefore changing the type of crops. And this is going to be done, obviously, in close cooperation with the extension workers. Landlocked Malawi, which suffers periodic crop failures and is prone to floods, is frequently in need of food and other aid. Limited road access in many of its rural areas makes it difficult to get help to needy communities. The country relies heavily on rain-fed agriculture, and most of its maize is grown on small plots by subsistence farmers. 
You're watching Network Africa on Channels Television, still ahead. A group of Libyan activists shed light on regional issues through their own theatre company. Please stay with us. <laughs> 